Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Cobert, and today's episode is the Denver Broncos draft class. Starting with the first pick of the draft, Garrett Bowles, offensive tackle slash offensive guard uh, from Utah. When it comes to his production, he scored 61 in terms of explosiveness for his size, 90.01 when it comes to speed for his size, and 95.36 when it comes to flexibility for his size. Realistically, with Garrett Bowles, uh, the only real issue in terms of just his profile is from a physical characteristic standpoint. Uh, 83% of multiple All Pro slash Pro Bowl tackles since the 1996 NFL Draft class were six foot six or taller. Uh, when it comes to that position, uh, the tackle position is a position that 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 has a favor to taller tackles and unfortunately Garrett Bowles doesn't hit that and the players who became multiple all pro slash pro bowl who did not hit six foot six or higher were guys like Walter Jones and uh, Jason Peters and Trent Williams and this is Trent Williams Jason Peters compared to Garrett Bowles uh, they're much more explosive players than Garrett Bowles uh, that similar speed, similar flexibility, but they do not have uh, similarities when it comes to just overall athleticism. So despite the fact that Garrett Bowles is a very good athlete, uh, he has issues in terms of just his uh, athleticism. And then, of course, there's the age question mark, which, again, 100% of multiple All-Pro offensive tackles since the 1996 NFL draft class were 23 and a half or less, and Garrett Bowles is over that mark. And the Pro Bowl mark is 24 and Garrett Bowles doesn't hit that mark either because I know there's some people that want to compare Garrett Bowles to Andre Whitworth and this is actually Andre Whitworth compared to Garrett Bowles when it comes to their athleticism traits. Somewhat different but the bottom line is Garrett Bowles has above average athleticism traits but his size is just not from a from a height standpoint it's just not ideal for that position uh, but there are some positives here that you could see some some good things in his profile. I think he's a better fit inside, but since the, the Broncos are having issues when it comes to the tackle position, that's where he's going to start out first. But I do think that he would be a better fit inside, which would benefit him tremendously uh, based on his athletic uh, sort of physical characteristics. Then we come to the next pick of the draft in terms of Demarcus Walker, defensive end out of Florida State. When it comes to his production, he scored 93.34 in terms of solo tackle market share, 81.66 when it comes to sack market share, and 83.79 when it comes to tackle for loss market share. All those marks are very good. Very One of the more athletic uh, defensive ends in the class. But his issue is with athleticism. Uh, scored 75.31 in terms of explosiveness for his size. 64.61 when it comes to speed for his size and only 12.74 when it comes to flexibility for his size. His flexibility marks do not hit all pro, pro slash pro bowl level, especially when it comes to short show and three cone. They do not hit uh, the area where multiple all pro and multiple pro bowl uh, defensive ends have been. Uh, so that's not exactly good, but the positives is that he is above average productive and he has above average uh, athleticism traits. So I think best case scenario of Demarcus Walker, you have a long-term starter, uh, but he's not necessarily someone who has the athleticism traits uh, to match his production. So that's the only sort of issue with Demarcus Walker. And then we come to the next pick of the draft in terms of Carlos Henderson, wide receiver out of Louisiana Tech. When it comes to his production, he scored 72.09 when it comes to his passing yardage market share production, which hits three-time Pro Bowl level. And when it comes to athleticism, he scored 83.26 in terms of explosiveness for his size, 80.20 when it comes to speed for his size, and 40.72 when it comes to flexibility for his size. His only real issue uh, is when it comes to his, his production, which is adjusted for his schedule. So his schedule adjusted production because, again, he did not play at Alabama or LSU or like a top program, but his production for his level of competition is not that great. This is Carlos Henderson compared to uh, the last, uh, since 1969, actually, in terms of this production metric. And based on his schedule adjusted production, he doesn't hit the area of All Pro, which is 79 or higher. And he doesn't hit the area of Pro Bowl, even, which is 72 or higher when it comes to schedule adjusted production. Um, and this just hurts him, man. Uh, despite the fact that he does have three time Pro Bowl uh, production, the schedule adjusted production just kind of brings into doubt how good he's going to be in terms of high quality outcomes. So 
Uh, despite the fact he does have some positive athleticism traits, uh, his production for his level of competition is just not where it needs to be in terms of high quality outcomes. So I would say best be, a better case for him would be a long-term starter, uh, but there, there's just question marks when it comes to his schedule. So that's the only real issue in terms of Carlos Henderson. Then we come to the next pick of the draft in terms of Brendan Langley, cornerback out of Lamar when it comes to his production at the FCS level. He scored 51.38 in terms of solo attacker market share, 81.40 when it comes to pass flexion market share. Uh, he hits the Pro Bowl market share mark, and for uh, for both his solo tackle market share and his pass deflection market share. But again, this is against FCS competition, and the real only issue with Brendan Langley is with his athleticism. He only scored uh, 45.60 in terms of explosiveness for a size, 67.98 when it comes to speed for a size, and 47.56 when it comes to flexibility for a size. So he does have some positive uh, production marks, but his athleticism marks, as you can clearly see are just not elite. Uh, I think a better sort of scenario for Langley is that he can become a long-term starter, but he's not someone that I would expect high-quality outcomes for. And based on his production from his level of competition, especially FCS guys usually become backups anyways, so I think that would be kind of like a backup to starter would be sort of what I would project Langley as based on his data profile. And then we come to the next pick in terms of Jake Butt, tight end out of Michigan. When it comes to his production, he scored 75.59 in terms of uh, passing yardage market share production. And he does not have any athleticism testing, uh, which is somewhat of an issue when it comes to Jake Butt in terms of projection. But he at least hit the Pro Bowl level when it comes to his production marks. Uh, he has decent uh, height and weight and like he fits the mold of all that stuff. But without athletic testing, it's really hard to determine just how good he can be. Um, so the, the best case I would say with Jake Butt is I'm comfortable projecting him as a starter based on his production uh, and sort of his overall physical characteristics. But I, I don't really feel comfortable projecting him as like a pro bowl or all pro guy uh, or all pro guy even uh, because there just isn't enough information here or data available to really... Uh, reject him that much so that's the only issue in terms of Jake but then we go to the next pick in terms of Isaiah McKenzie wide receiver out of Georgia uh, when it comes to his production he scored 55.18 when it comes to his uh, passing yards market share production which unfortunately doesn't hit long-term starter three-time Pro Bowl five-time Pro Bowl or all pro level for his production uh, but he does have intriguing athleticism traits scored 37.14 inches explosives for a size 61.20 when it comes to speed for a size and 81.59 when it comes to flexibility for a size this is Isaiah McKenzie compared to Taylor Gabriel from an athleticism standpoint. And they compare very well to each other. Uh, McKenzie compares extremely well in terms of it as a slot sort of Taylor Gabriel-esque uh, slot receiver. So there are some positives from that aspect of him. Uh, but I just don't think that long-term starter... Again, they're, they're, the threshold for long-term starters is 58 or higher and he didn't hit that mark. So I, I would think he, he's more likely going to be a contributor than an actual starter on the roster based on his uh, production. Mm -hmm. yep. Then we come to the next pick of the draft in terms of uh, D'Angelo Henderson, uh, running back out of, uh, uh, out of the uh, FCS level. When it comes to his production, he scored 62.35 in terms of uh, total offensive market share production which based, because of his level of competition, the model that I have is only specifically for FBS guys, so I can't really project much with him because the model is based purely on FBS, not, not FCS level. Uh, but he does have positive athleticism traits. He scored uh, 68.33 in terms of explosives for his size, 85.56 in terms of speed for his size. Uh, didn't have any flexibility testing, so I can't really say much about that. Uh, but I would just say with Henderson, I mean, there are some positive athleticism traits, uh, but because his production is at his level of competition uh, is not really amazing. I mean, 62.35 would be kind of okay as an FBS guy, but as an FCS guy, it seems kind of bad uh, just from an anecdotal sort of standpoint. Uh, but I do think that Henderson has some potential to kind of be C.J. Anderson-ish as a player on the team but i wouldn't expect him to become like a, a you know like a long-term starter someone who becomes a consistent long-term starter let alone high quality outcomes uh based on his sort of uh profile overall so 
I would say that's more likely you're looking at a committee back uh, than someone that can actually become a consistent starter for you guys. And then the last pick of the draft in terms of Chad Kelly, quarterback out of uh, Ole Miss, when it comes to his high school production, he scored 33.14 out of 100, which unfortunately doesn't hit the starter threshold since 2007 in terms of uh, 69 or higher when it comes to high school production score. And he definitely doesn't hit the Pro Bowl high school production threshold of 84 or higher. Uh, so Chad Kelly is someone that I would just not really consider to be a long-term starter or a high-quality player based on his high school production. Uh, he does have decent collegiate production. He scored 87.58 when it comes to his college production. But again, high school production going all the way back to the 2007 NFL draft class has been a fairly steady predictor of players since that time. So I just think that when you look at that high school production score and you look at, again, and this is a score that's based on over 6,000 plus sample size from the 2007 NFL draft class to now, uh, I, I think I kind of side with that. So despite the fact that Chad Kelly had very good college production, uh, he has one really big red flag in terms of his high school production, which leads me to think that he probably most likely won't become a long-term starter in the future, but anything can happen. You know, anything's possible, but it hasn't happened yet. It would be unprecedented, and that's just kind of how I'll leave it like that. I think best case, you have a backup based on his data profile, but not somebody that you should consider to be a starter. Uh, so how do I feel about the Denver Broncos draft class? Well, I think it's uh, it's not amazing by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, they took a lot of risks, you know, taking a player like Garrett Bowles. I know it's later in the first round. But he's a guy who has question marks in terms of just high quality upside. Uh, his age caps his ability to become a pro ball stretch all pro player. His height kind of puts into doubt his ability to become an all pro slash pro bowl player. Uh, so there's a lot of question marks with him uh, based on his age and based on some of his physical characteristics in terms of overall upside. Uh, Demarcus Walker has questions in terms of overall upside based on his flexibility testing. Carlos Henderson has questions about overall upside in terms of his competition. Uh, Brennan Langley has questions about overall upside because of his athleticism. Uh, Jake Budd has questions about overall upside because he just didn't test uh, for anything because he was injured. Uh, Isaiah McKenzie has questions about overall upside, as does D'Angelo Henderson for uh, somewhat for height reasons and also somewhat for production reasons. And then Chad Kelly has obvious reasons in terms of overall upside questions because of his uh, production at high school, which doesn't take into account the character stuff, which I'm not really going to get into because this isn't data related in terms of his character stuff. Uh, so I that's all I would really say is I, I think you've got a lot of players that have athleticism skill sets to become starters, but you don't have any players that scream more most likely pro bowl or most likely all pro guy uh, so that's really the only issue with the draft class is you got lots of players that have potential to become starters but you don't have any player with enough variables in their favor to suggest that they could become a pro bowl or all pro player based on the past pro mm -hmm. bowl pro bowl slash all pro players at their respective positions mm -hmm. uh, so that is realistically the only issue with the draft classes from that sort of perspective uh, which is not bad. Uh, it's just that there's not a ton of potential for guys to be like elite or any like. There's not a lot of getting a guy that could be like a force multiplier type of player. Uh, so that's really the only issue in terms of the class from that kind of perspective. So again, my name is James Coburn. You can follow my work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics. And if you like this content, if you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. That helps me out tremendously. Mm -hmm. uh, sharing this video with friends and family is also great. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.